So as you grow into the outfit of recovery, you can make it yours. You got to do the things that work for you and the amounts that fit your lifestyle. I can't take somebody else's plan and force it to work for me. If that doesn't feel right to me, I'm not going to want to do it. Worse, I'm just going to be going through the motions. I'm going to be, well, you know, Billy told me I should do 10 uh, recovery meetings, so I'm going to do 10 recovery meetings. But in the recovery meetings, if I don't pay attention and I don't connect with anybody, what's the use of that? That's not very helpful. So I can't take somebody else's plan and make it work for me. I have to do what works kind of in my viewpoint, right? Now, I'm not saying, look, you know, I don't have to do anything. You have to do something. But I am saying you can do it in the way that works for you the best, all right? So take the ideas offered to you in this program and create a recovery process that flows with you. So I'm going to warn you. Most people that I, that I talk with them about this, they, they say, hey, all I hear you saying is that you're telling me to stay busy because idle time leads me into trouble. So I'm going to stay busy. I'm going to stay connected. I'm going to do all these things, and I won't have any free time. Look, keep, keeping busy will help you in the short run. However, we're talking about the long term. We're talking the new version of yourself. And you can't stay busy all of the time. That's just not going to be possible. There's going to be times in your life where there's nothing to do because you've done everything that you had to do that day. And you're going to be alone with your thoughts and your feelings. And you're going to be sitting with them. Okay? We all got times like that. right? No matter, it may be short times, maybe long times. But remember, time is relative. So even in those short moments, it may feel like a very long time. So you've got to be able to have some flexibility in your plan. Meaning, <clears throat> I have, you know, I have things I need to do. I need to work out. I need to go to my recovery meetings. I need to work. I need to stay connected to friends and family. And I also need time for myself. And with the flow of all that stuff, you know, I have some general idea about how this is going to work. But don't be so married to the schedule that if something doesn't work out, you throw it all out. And you go, oh, no, this will never work because I, I didn't get to the gym this morning. And if I don't get to the gym, everything else is thrown off. If you're going to be like that, recovery is going to be very difficult, okay? Because life is always going to be happening. It's always going to be throwing things at you. So you have to be kind of go with the flow on some things. Now, you can be, you can be the big whale and go against the current, you know. But do you want to do that all of the time? Sometimes you're going to want to relax, too. So there's going to be a blend of, you know, going against the current, and sometimes you go with the current. And you've got to do what, what feels right and what works for you. So you want to have that flexibility built in to your plan, okay? So now I'll be talking to you about um, old pattern behaviors. Old pattern behaviors are just that. They're stuff that you've done in the past, the way you've thought, the way that you feel, and the things that you've done. And they're stored somewhere in your biological brain, in your memory banks, okay? And they just hang out in there. So you're creating this new version of yourself. And when you create this new version of yourself, some things, sometimes things go wrong in our life. Sometimes cars break down. Sometimes family members are not all that happy. Sometimes work is not always that pleasant, okay? And stuff happens. And what happens is our old pattern behaviors come in there, and they go... All right, let's do the old thing. Let's crack one open and have a drink. Let's, let's go get a hit. Let's go get a high. Let's go gamble. Whatever, whatever the addiction is. It could even be feeling anxious or depressed, any of those things, okay? It's, it'll come back. And it's tapping you on the shoulder and it's saying, remember me? Remember how to do this? And of course you do, because you're not going to forget. But this is where awareness comes in. So if you can be aware, the more aware you can be, you can change that old pattern behavior at any time, right? So here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the minute you wake up and you say, oh, this is the old stuff. This is the stuff I do not want to do anymore. This is not the version of me I want to be. This is your opportunity to change that, okay? And as soon as you become aware, that's the moment you get to change. 
And life, the beauty about it, will always give you moments to change. Okay, so I always tell, tell this to anybody who's going through addiction or anxiety or depression, anger, it doesn't matter, right? So if, if, if I find myself, and I'm, this is a typical one, I'm driving down the road and I see the, the store where I can get some beer, wine, or gamble, or whatever, usually a convenience store, right? And I think to myself, well, I've always stopped in there. It would be very easy for me to stop in there and go do this. The minute I wake up and say, oh, this is, the, this is the old stuff, this is the stuff I don't want to do, I can choose to do something different, meaning I can continue driving down the road and not stop. Heck, even if I do stop at the convenience store, as soon as I get in the parking lot, if I figure out, oh, the hello, if I go in there, there's going to be trouble, I can reverse and drive away. Even if I get out of my car, I can think, oh, I don't want to walk in there. I can get back in the car, start it up, and drive home. Even if I walk through the door of the convenience store, the minute I get in there, I can say, oh, what was I thinking? This is, this is the wrong direction. You can walk out then, get back in the car and drive out. Even if you walk in front of the you know, refrigerator, glass door, looking at the stuff, you can think to yourself, man, this, this, it looks good, but I don't want to do it. You can turn around, you can change, you can come out. Okay, so at any moment, any moment you can make those changes. You can wake up. You can do something different. All right, so that all being said, that you can change at any moment, you do want to know your old pattern behaviors. Okay, you want to know, is there things that trigger me, right, to think about it? Are there things that kind of make me more vulnerable to doing my addictive behavior you know, my boss coming in yelling at me, or uh, other places, you know, driving under a bridge. I don't know, all kinds of things, all right? So you've got to kind of know the old stuff so that you don't do it, all right, and you wake up to it. So if you know that after work you like to go drinking with the guys, you know, I can't, you can't allow yourself to do the same old thing if you want to change. So instead you have to say, well, after work, I might go home, spend time with my children before dinner, or if I don't have a family, I might go exercise, I might go to a recovery meeting, or something else that captures my full attention, okay? The point is, you've got to want to do something different, and you've got to know the old stuff in order to do the new stuff, okay? So, at any time, you've, you've kind of kind of have these things on your mind so that you don't fall prey to them. Right? I, I don't go veering off into the old stuff. And like I said, anytime you wake up and you're doing the old stuff, that's your cue to try something different. All right, so I'll talk about urges and cravings now. So urges are I need. That's when you feel like I need this thing. Okay? Cravings are, well, I'd want it. <laughs> okay, That's the difference. And some people say, well, there isn't much difference to either one. I might agree with you. I don't, you know, an urge would be, you know, a stronger thing in most people's opinions, and a craving would be like, well, it's getting me to the urge. So if you can think about it like that, that might be more helpful. All right. So when urges and cravings come through for a visit, and, and listen, they will, okay, know that they're just thoughts. They're no different than any thought that you have about, like, what am I going to eat for dinner? Or what am I going to wear today? Okay? The urge and the craving feel different, though, because the thought creates the specific feeling, and it makes it real to us. Okay? So that, that's why the urges and cravings feel different than what am I going to have for dinner. But it's no different. It's just a thought. Okay? A thought creates a feeling, gives us the experience. Right? So if you know that urge and cravings are nothing more than thoughts, when you recognize them, and you're usually going to know and recognize them through your feeling, okay, um, you can do something different. You can do something that captures your full attention or something else. And I'm going to talk to you about some kind of three different ways you can do this, but there are many different ways you can do this. So don't just think that what I'm talking about is the only way you can distract yourself or focus on something else. There, there are lots of different ways to do this, okay? but I'll just talk about them in general. So we can distract, we can observe, or we can do something that captures our full attention in the moment. Now distracting ourselves is just that. Let's talk about Elvis. 
if I start thinking about Elvis, and he can be wearing any outfit I want him to wear, he can be the big Elvis, he can be the skinny Elvis, and he can sing whatever song he wants to sing, wherever, right? So I get the picture, and now I'm getting the feeling that kind of goes with that thought. Now, if I want to stop thinking about Elvis, I can't tell myself to, hey, stop thinking about Elvis, because it just doesn't work that way. Elvis gets more animated, he sings louder, he gets in my face. But I can, however, think of something else, and this is distraction. If I start thinking about McDonald's, Happy Meals, hamburgers, french fries, Ronald, Grimace, well, I start getting hungry. Elvis might be hanging around, but he's going to be in the periphery now, not on the main stage. Okay? That's distraction. And you can do that if you can distract yourself with anything around you. Observation is noticing the thought and allowing it to pass through. I always tell people to think of it like a homeless person, right? If I stopped on the road, and if I stopped to listen to a homeless person on the side of the road and really listen, I might get really bothered by what he or she is saying. But if I go about my business, and he or she is still ranting and raving, but I don't pay any attention to it, it's just that. It's just noise, right? So you can do something um, in, the, in this uh, observation by saying, look, I, I acknowledge you, I hear you, I kind of feel you. You can hang out in the corner here, but you're not going to get my full attention. Okay, and you can rant and rave, but I'm not going to pay attention to you. I'm just going to be doing this. And the, the strange thing is the more that you do this, you're going to find that these thoughts, these urges and cravings will pass through faster and faster and faster because they won't have the same power that they used to have. And you just kind of notice, yeah, that's the urge, that's the crave, but you won't it won't be able to create that feeling anymore because you just won't be paying attention to it, okay? So the last part, right, is doing something that captures your full attention. And if you do something that captures your full attention, you can't give any energy to the urge or the craving, and then it falls away. So know that you have to have a few things that capture your attention and be ready to use them because our biological mind adapts, right? And it may not go for what the usual is. So if I'm usually putting in a video and it makes me feel better because I get into it, some days I might, might watch the video and say, I can't watch it anymore because I just don't feel like watching it. And, or that could go with a song, that could go with a walk, that could go with lots of things. So you're, you're going to have to be flexible in what you do. All right, so those are the ways to deal with urges and cravings. Now, the last piece I'm going to talk to you about is kind of how recovery, well, it's not actually the last piece, second to the last piece, how recovery is a lot like a con, you know, contact sport. Okay? So you have to know the strengths and weaknesses of yourself. What do you do well? What don't I do so well? You have to know these things about yourself so that you can become aware of when you need to call someone for help or do something different. You have to know the strengths and the weaknesses of the addiction, okay? And you have to balance them out, and that's the dance of recovery, okay? So, so you have to know these things. You have to know what you do well, what it does well, what you don't do well, what it doesn't do well, and kind of be ready for anything that may come up. All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you about relapse. And if you do relapse, it's not the end of the world. I'm not advocating giving permission or saying that it's okay, all right? So, so no one wants you to do it. But I am saying that if you happen to relapse, learn from it. You'll go through the grief cycle as you got off track with the recovery process, and you're, you're going to experience denial, anger, depression, bargaining. Then you'll come down to acceptance, okay? And you may not follow that in that order. But you're going you're gonna to go through that um, grief process because you've, you've got off track, right? So that's just normal. Right? So go easy on yourself. Ultimately, the best you can do with relapse is to learn from it. What did you do that didn't quite work out too well? What didn't I do that I could try next time? Um, how do I do this differently? You want to be asking those questions so that if you do run into a, a relapse situation, you know, I could do something different than do the same thing over and over and over again. You're going to have to go back to the drawing board. You're going to have to go back and see the things that worked and things that didn't work so well. You want to give it some thought as to why maybe it didn't work so well, and then what do you think might be different the next time? Because, you know, you potentially will run into it again. All right, so that's, that's kind of the, the relapse 
piece I'm going to give you about this, all right? So they're, they're learning and teaching moments. You can think of them like that. Now, if you continually relapse, you have to do something a lot different than if you just relapse once, okay? All right. So remember, recovery is a process. It's not a place or a destination. You don't ever achieve it. We move towards it, and we always stay on the path. And as long as we're walking the path, we're doing something. It's alive to us, okay? All right, so in this session, I tried to talk to you about trying on the outfit of recovery and making it fit for you. You have to do what works for you. Make it your plan. Make it your way, all right? But you do have to do something. Uh, I've talked about what to do with old pattern thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and what to do when they come back out of your memory banks, okay? I've talked about how to deal with urges and cravings, right? So you looked at distraction, observation, doing something that captures your full attention. Remember, you're going to have more than one thing, and you're probably going to have to need more than three or four things, and then be open to trying something new should you run into a problem when all five things don't work out, okay? Last thing I talked to you about was kind of, well, before that, I did talk to you about how um, recovery is like a contact sport. You have to know your strengths, what you do well. You have to know your weaknesses, what you don't do so well. Addiction strengths, addic addictions weaknesses. And that's the dance, okay? And then if you do happen to relapse, you learn from it. You go back to the drawing board, you make your adjustments, run your run into a similar situation, you do something different. And this, hopefully this talk will, will give you some ideas about, you know, early recovery, how to, how to make your way through it, what kinds of things you're going to be dealing with, and, um, and creating that new version of yourself. That's really the exciting point. If, if you want to put any energy and effort into something, put it into that. Put it into, I'm creating a new version of myself, and you'll, you'll work wonders. Don't put it back into the past. Don't put that energy back into all the disappointment. You'll go nowhere. You just spin around in circles, okay? Put it in a direction that moves you forward. And that's what I'd like to share with you today.